morning. We will call the rules committee meeting to order here. This time, I'd like to ask uh, Councillor Austin, would you please do the honors here? Father, we come to you together around this table to conduct the business of the Cherokee Nation. We ask for your guidance. We ask for your wisdom. We ask that uh, we never let our will get in the way of your will. Lord, we uh, ask your blessings upon all those who uh, are part of the Cherokee Nation. In your name, amen. Roll call, Shelly. Yes, sir. Honey. Bonnie. Here. Okay. The minutes were mailed to you at this time. I entertain a motion to approve. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, aye. ayes have it. Now for uh, reports, uh, Marshal Shannon Buell. I know you've been really, really busy. Good afternoon. Uh, I added something to the table for everybody to kind of see. I figured it was important. Uh, instead of me trying to explain what my team's been doing, to actually give you something to see. Uh, if there's no questions on the normal rules, I don't mind answering, answering questions on this as far as where we're at, what we're doing, uh, what's going on with the, uh, the flooding. So if there's any questions, I'm here for you. Okay, any questions? You could give us a, a brief narrative of what they've been doing. And if he goes too long, then we can always cut him off. <laughs> <coughs> no. Uh, give us a, a, a brief update on, I know you guys have been extremely busy, Shannon. Uh, our operational window started with the tornadoes uh, in several communities that we have around the 14 counties. Uh, we responded with uh, the Marshal Service with emergency management to go assess damage to help citizens that were affected by the tornadoes. That uh, rapidly turned into the flood. Uh, the county of Muskogee uh, their emergency management contacted my emergency management and asked if we could handle all uh, special operations on this side of the river. That means uh, rescuing people, getting people out of houses, <coughs> stuff like that. Uh, we talked and said yes we could. I activated my special operations team and we moved our entire team down to uh, the Simmons manufacturing plant in Fort Gibson. That's where it's set up. And we've done 24-7 operations out of there since. Uh, we've done everything from rescuing three youth that decided to get in a homemade boat and go out and look at the, the water and it capsized. Uh, that was the, true, the only true in-water rescue of humans that we had to do. Uh, the rest have been, uh, quite frankly, people being too stubborn for their own good. Uh, we'd go around and say, you, you, you need to leave. I've been here 30 years and the water has never got to me yet. Well, it's coming. And then they would call us in two days. We need help to get out. So a lot of those were that. They weren't emergencies, but they could have turned in. Uh, we've had some medical uh, issues that we've uh, had taken care of. One was uh, in Braggs. Braggs is pretty much cut off from the rest of the world. Uh, we had a, a person that uh, was having cancer surgery yesterday. Uh, we got them out of Bragg's and got them in a hotel the night before here in Tahlequah because we were worried with the storms yesterday that we couldn't even get them out. Uh, we've worked with everybody from uh, Oklahoma Highway Patrol to uh, Fort Gibson Police Department, Fort Gibson Fire. They've been fantastic in uh, allowing us to do our job where they did theirs. Uh, the city of Fort Gibson was without power for one night. Uh, and we put extra patrols in that city to help their, their manpower there. Uh, not to mention, both of our boat teams uh, took, took OG&E into the substation, cut the locks on the 
uh, the gates in the substation with the airboats and then went into the substation with the airboat for OG and E to cut the substation so they could bring a temporary substation in. So we've done everything from that to rescue nine calves, or 19 calves, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, if you would have told me a month ago that I'd be on an airboat at 7.30 at night roping calves, <laughs> I, I would not have believed you. Uh, so we've done we've done everything from that. We've rescued 19 calves, two <laughs> pigs that were quote show pigs is oh. what I was told, a cat, two dogs, uh, 19 people. Uh, not to mention all the numerous building checks and checking our casino at Fort Gibson. I can tell you it was very impressive to watch the staff of C&E. Uh, the night that we called said we need to get. Uh, movement on Fort Gibson Casino. Their staff came in with semis, and that place was cleaned out in one night. It was very, very <coughs> impressive uh, what they what they did. Uh, our boats, uh, our our main rescue vessel is actually owned by the BIA, out of the Muskogee office. It's an airboat. You all might have seen it on TV or in the news. <clears throat> That's not our boat. That's the BIA's boat. Uh, BIA gave us two operators uh, the first day, and then. Uh, they were just short-staffed and they had to leave <coughs> uh, 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 employee by the name of Jerry Keener he's in loss prevention now at c and &E at Hard Rock he just retired out of the BIA office in Muskogee I don't know maybe a year ago he was the only one that we knew that was certified to operate their airboat we contacted c and &E and he came over he's attached to my special operations team and he has not been off the boat yet uh, he works that boat if you see that boat on the water, he's the one piling it. So he is uh, working 18, 19 hour days piloting that boat in some very, very dangerous uh, situations. So uh, he works for c &E now. So if you see anybody from c &E, please uh, thank them for letting us borrow uh, Jerry Keener. He's been, we could not have rescued these people and, and there would have been loss of life if we didn't have that individual with us. So. Uh, please let them know that. Uh, at ENF, uh, after rules, uh, we we're proposing a, a budget mod, to, uh, and that budget mod mainly concerns with uh, paying our people, <laughs> feeding our people, and the equipment that we're doing for this uh, pretty much, you might as well call it a nationwide recovery, anywhere from uh, South Coffeyville all the way down to Roland. Um, my teams are out. 24/7 trying to trying to help people. So that's kind of what that is in a brief uh, thing for ENF. If you have questions on that, the only reason I'm saying it now is if I get a <coughs> phone call, I won't be able to stay for ENF. I ran home, put a suit on just a minute ago, and I'll run home and take it off. Uh, but other than that, is there any questions on the operation? Any questions for our marshal? <coughs> yes, Councilor Buzzer. Yes, Ken, thank you and your team for all that you do. But you didn't mention Jay. We had a tornado up there. The other we night. did. That's one of the ones Cannons that we worked. Had electricity for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You didn't. I don't, were you there? Yeah. Oh, you know, we were. That's one of the ones. Were, yeah, yeah, we had a bunch of people up in Jay. Uh, I can tell you that uh, FEMA has only uh, allowed for four counties in our 14: uh, Muskogee, Sequoia, Wagner, and Tulsa are the only counties that FEMA is reimbursing. Now that doesn't mean that that's the only counties we're working in. I want to be very clear. If we have tribal citizens need help, I don't care if we're reimbursed by FEMA. It's always nice if we're reimbursed from FEMA, but that is not a requirement. I know that my guys worked with uh, Jay Police Department that night of uh, the tornado. Uh, we tried to hit every place that had one, but that night we had a lot of tornadoes out there. Uh, as you know, my head of special operations, Danny Tanner, lives in Jay. Uh, so he, he was right there in the middle of it. Uh, so no, uh, every I don't know if there's a tribal community that has not been touched uh, with this this weather that we've had. If you don't live in a place that was affected, you have a friend or a family member that's living in there and and uh, taken back from it. So no, definitely Jay was was really hard hit. <coughs> we want to make sure that we help them out as well. Thank you. Are you good, Councilor Shamble? Um, I would just like to say thank you. Uh, you know, there was three marshals there uh, at the scene. Um, <coughs> appreciate you sending them down. Also, I'm going to save it to the end, but i thank the Cherokee Nation, Slide Water, the Fire Department, uh, Slide Water, the Clinic, 
and supplied water to the Oak Hill Piney community. Um, serviced a lot of people. Uh, it was a very good deal. You know, the clinic didn't have water, had to have drinking water in, potable water. So um, it was a pretty big deal when we ran out of power. But uh, Cherokee Nation stepped up, and it was uh, very good for our community, and we are very thankful. Uh, our community is very thankful of Cherokee Nation and the Marshall Service uh, very much. Well, thank you. <coughs> Councilor England. Yeah, thank you, Speaker. Uh, Shannon, you said you mentioned Tulsa County. Well, we had a disaster up there, and I don't remember seeing. I had people ask me, what, is the Cherokee Nation going to help rescue a lot of those elderly people? But we had to go find some people that had those airboats, and we probably got five or six elderly Cherokee people out of their houses. That They came up way too quick. They right. had no notice whatsoever between Hominy Creek and Bird Creek. But I didn't see any Cherokee Nation cars up that way. No, and with with each community, if the community called for our help, we put marshals there. Uh, Jay called. But if we didn't hear from the community, we didn't go just because okay. we... Well, I just want to know how, what's the protocol we, we, on it. Yeah, if they uh, called us and we had men available or women available, we would go. Okay. But I can't, I got 31 people total. Yeah. Uh, not only are we doing recovery and rescue operations, we're still having to do election stuff. We're still having to do right. child molestations and all the normal stuff that we're doing. You know, now we're into, you know, trying to place people in, in as close to districts as we can for Saturday and, and all the stuff surrounding that. We're still having to do our day-to-day our -day job plus do yeah. all the special operations. So we didn't get a call from there or we would have tried to get. get but I know Skytech was underwater too, so. Yeah. It is. We have one airboat and it's not ours. Mm -hmm. So. Well, we actually got, and we ended up getting two from the Highway Patrol, so. Good, good. But I knew that Highway Patrol was big up there. Yeah. Cause we asked for an airboat from OHP, and, they, and it was at Sky Took. It couldn't come to us. Yeah. So. So, but it was, a, we had a disaster up there, too. I Absolutely. You In did. the north end. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> With our cross-deputization, you know, we don't get a call, but yet we know, like, uh, Tulsa area can we just communicate and say I mean of course they, they if if our citizens are up there they don't distinguish from one for another they just help right, right? yeah the 911 calls don't come to us they're, they're going to come to that local agency and if that local agency needs help like Fort Gibson did us or Jay or whoever uh, then we will try to move assets to make that work but uh, if, they, if they don't call us we don't know to I don't have the manning to go to every situation, even though I would like to. Sure. <coughs> yes, Councilor Dobbins. <coughs> yeah, I think the city of Fort Gibson's probably been impacted as much as any community. Uh, about half of it's underwater. <coughs> but I would like to just share with the council the American Red Cross set up a shelter there in Fort Gibson. And uh, it's staffed by national people, not mm -hmm. local people. Mm -hmm. uh, met when visited with people from New York, North Carolina, Florida. And they're just amazed. They were preparing for 50 plus in this shelter, and only eight came. And they're just amazed at maybe the resiliency of our people, family, how they just kind of kick in and take care of, of, of each other. But I uh, came there from this morning. They had 13, but uh, they were preparing for 50, and the first night they had eight. Mm -hmm. So it's <laughs> it's amazing how resilient. People, Cherokee people are, and they take care of their family, and right. well, I they were amazed. I can tell you, we had uh, uh, Jeremy, our emergency management, uh, with the emergency management team, has requested FEMA to bring a, a team of nine people in on a critical incident team. And they're specialists in every part of this disaster. They're from Florida. They got in yesterday, mm -hmm. and they're going to be around in all the communities assessing damage, assessing what's needed, uh, helping us get our reimbursement costs from FEMA, uh, mainly just uh, my special operations team with Marsars has been a pretty much every major disaster this country's had in a very long time. Uh, we were at Joplin, we were at Katrina, we were in Florida, we were in Houston, we are in the Dakotas. We, we go to wherever we, they ask us to come, usually under the BIA envelope. So a lot of my guys that you see on the operational side, they're used to this. They're used to 18-hour days sleeping in a, a trailer and, and doing this job. Our emergency emergency management staff that uh, aren't used to this level of, of disaster. Uh, one, two, they're not employed by me. 
most of my the IMT, the incident management team, are other tribal employees from other departments. So like our one of our finance people, she's from another department. Uh, that department hasn't seen her in a week, you know, because this when this team gets pulled in, we'll pull one from the finance department, one from Rose, one from government services, one from all over, and that team comes together to build this team for the entire 14 counties. So it's, it's not just us that are, are working hard. It's, it's every department, pretty much every major department in this tribe has a member on that team. Uh, and those, those members are needed in their normal jobs, uh, but they're pulled away from those normal jobs and assigned to this team to help in the, the national crisis, which would be the, the, the tribal nation. So uh, please keep those, those employees in mind as well. They're not used to uh, working all evening and long hours and high stress. It's, it's high stress fielding these phone calls for service when you have people out of water, out of medicine, uh, out of milk. We had uh, my special operations team worked with uh, the railroad and uh, we pretty much, uh, with their permission, took over the railroad to run what's called high trucks. If you've ever seen uh, people working on the railroad, they've got trucks and the, the wheels come down and get on. Uh, we commandeered three of those and we've been running supplies into Braggs. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to get to Braggs. So uh, my team are, are very good. Danny Tanner's the team commander down there during this operation. He's very good at looking at options, and that's what this is about, options. You know, if, if, there's, if the community can help their own, please do so. I mean, that's the best way to do it. If, if they can't, that's where we try to help any way we can. And uh, I have eight guys on that team. Uh, we've done the lion's share of the, the response. Uh, you can look at the different responses that we have on this. Uh, our, our, our men and women at the Marsh Service have been uh, tremendously busy this week so yes councilor taylor i just want to say that i appreciated the pretty much immediate response to us where to send people and it was everything you know instead of well call housing for this call human services for that it was one place and it was immediately communicated to us and i appreciate that and also just to say that this is another an example of how quickly we can respond we don't have to wait for FEMA to get here. We don't have to wait for the FEMA daughters to get here. We're going to respond to that today. And so it, it's a moment to be proud and thank your, you know, thank your team and everything um, because it, it does make me proud that we can respond to people's needs quickly. Thank you. Yes, Councillor uh, Watkins. Uh, hey, Speaker. The, uh, I was at a Native American Lives Matter at Delaware County this weekend, and there was families there that have their um, some of their family members have been missing for for, for years mm -hmm. there's one in particular named Christopher Teal mm -hmm. and uh, I was visiting with the family she had mentioned that the marshal service was involved with with uh, investigating uh, this uh, this boy missing him the family um, this you know they don't have a lot of confidence that we exhausted all remedies as far as an investigation goes because it said some of the close friends of this missing person hasn't been uh, interviewed and uh, just I didn't know if if we have done everything or have we given up like where are we out on this no we're still actively involved with that case uh, we've had two missing persons that we've been involved with in the past three weeks uh, one we actually found in uh, El Paso uh, she was Yes, she was supposed to be a murder victim, but yeah. wasn't. Thank goodness, we got her recovered. Uh, the young, the young boy. Uh, we're working with OSBI right now on that. Uh, okay. We went to a couple of sites. Uh, I don't want to get too involved in it in an open forum, but we're working diligently with OSBI, and it is not over at all. Okay. So, if if you would, could you have one of your marshals or someone reach out to the family? And I know, I know, Brian Kitcher is assigned to that case, and he see, and he, he calls them every three days and gives them gives them updates okay see they, they said something different well if, if, if that's not the case right. having contact them just to say oh. that we're we're still working on it yep. no we're still working on it and uh, the other thing is is uh, on this election we had uh, submitted 
uh, 130, 140 ballots that ha that was not submitted to the election. Well, they were submitted to the election commission via email through scan uh, prior to the election date, and uh, and they haven't been counted. So we had CC'd you guys in the uh, in the election commission. Uh, have you guys looked into those, or have you guys? Uh, I had an investigator them? look at them. It's, it's an election commission decision. How the title works for election commission issues, complaints, stuff like that, okay, mm -hmm. is a, a complaining party will contact the election commission say, hey, I have whoever doing, allegedly doing whatever, okay? Uh, I don't want to get into specifics. Let's say... So this is an election commission issue? Yes. It's election we'll commission. Let them it. Yeah, absolutely. Election commission issue. It hasn't... Even though we get CC'd on it, I'm not going to circumvent the process until that piece gets to me. Okay. There's a process that it has to go through. It goes election commission, attorney general's office. If they can't get that resolved, it goes to me. What will the election commission be reporting today, Speaker? No, not that I'm aware of. Just have to put this in final no letter or some some way to communicate. Well, okay, that's all I have. Thank you. All right, Thank you. Council Smith. On the Braggs thing, I, I truly believe on those early hours when there wasn't any water or lights, if the marshals hadn't been there, they, it would have been a bad deal because there were very nervous people. And and uh, then when we got the man on the boat and got him out there and everything, that was a home run all the way around for the community because everybody had been calling me, talking to me. But when they tell me, they tell me, every one of them say how nice the marshals are to them. So that, that's, a, that's a big deal. That, Nobody called and complained about them. They just talked about how nice they were. Well, probably because we weren't arresting them at the time. <laughs> <laughs> we, it, but it, it would have got bad if they hadn't been there in that early Thank hours. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Hatfield. Um, I, had, I received a call from Escondido, California, and um, it was a concerned uh, <coughs> grandmother. Do, does Cherokee Nation and their Cherokee do they have, uh, do we have any, any, I, I know, I think the answer is no. I'm pretty sure it is, but I, I, she, she uh, you know, asked me to ask you if we have any type of jurisdict or any, any say-so about, you know, about any, a Cherokee member out of state. You mean a Cherokee member in California? Y yes. Oh, no. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. And another thing, I stopped at Warner yesterday, Warner, Oklahoma. And I talked to, I don't know, uh, his, the gentleman's name was Sam, and he's, and if anybody is, is donating, they need um, uh, over-the-counter medication, blankets, uh, towels, and washcloths. They had everything else covered. Just, just FYI, in case someone asks. This is Warner? Warner, uh -huh. they have a drop-off at the First Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know if it was my jurisdiction. I think I, if it's it his, matter. well, I'm helping you, okay. <laughs> thank you, Speaker. Anybody else? We know you've been busy. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you very Sorry. much. <laughs> Next, we have uh, okay. Office of Attorney General Chrissy Nemo. I just told Marshall Buell that we did not commandeer railroad trucks. That means you take them by force in a state of emergency. They volunteered to allow us to use them. We don't want the rumor getting out that Cherokee Nation is commandeering railroad uh, property. Um, very enough lawsuits, and I got a couple to talk about. Um, I sent an email on Friday. Our ICWA case, the um, federal case that was filed in uh, Fort Smith was voluntarily dismissed by the plaintiffs. Um, the reason in their motion was that they were going to pursue the case in state court. Um, I think they knew we were going to beat them, <laughs> so they got rid of it. But this was one of the line of cases. Uh, the Goldwater Institute was representing the uh, non-Indian mother and her husband, the stepfather, who was trying to adopt the child and terminate the parental rights of the Cherokee father. And the Goldwater Institute that has been involved in the other ICWA litigation was representing the plaintiffs in that case, and they filed making the same argument that ICWA is um, unconstitutional because it's race-based. Um, we responded to that, uh, to their initial petition uh, with a motion to dismiss, and instead of answering both ours and the United States motions to dismiss, they voluntarily dismissed their case. Um, it was dismissed without prejudice, meaning that they could refile it 
um, but we don't anticipate that they will. So um, we are still awaiting a decision in the other ICWA case that was argued at the Fifth Circuit in New Orleans. Um, my answer is always federal courts aren't under any timeline to rule, so we will uh, get that case when we, when we get it. Speaking of not, not being under a timeline, um, I noticed this only because I took a picture in the courtroom a year ago and it popped up on my um, photo memories. The uh, Cherokee Nation UKB case over trust land was argued more than a year ago now, and we have yet to receive a decision in that case as well. So it's another one hanging out there. Uh, probably the biggest case that's still hanging out is Murphy. Um, we have folks, we, we know every week when the Supreme Court is going to announce their decisions and you can, they don't allow uh, cameras in the courtroom at the Supreme Court, but there are bloggers that they have reporters inside of there who uh, put on a blog the second that an opinion comes out. So we have folks every Monday and Tuesday morning. Um, we don't have a decision on Murphy. We are positive that it will come in June. Um, because it can't come tomorrow because they won't be in session and when they're back in it, it will be in June and they will end in June and um, absent them releasing an order saying for some reason they're extending it which is very very unusual um, it will come sometime in the next three weeks so um, you know depending on what that is we uh, a lot of folks in Indian country got kind of excited because we had another Indian country win in a case that came out last week, um, Herrera v. Wyoming. It was a 5-4 split, um, and it was upholding hunting treaty rights of the Crow tribe. Um, and so the, the two kind of big <coughs> treaty cases that have come before the court this year from Indian country, tribes have prevailed in both of them. Um, the difference in our case in Murphy is we only have eight justices hearing it. Um, Justice Gorsuch, which sided with the tribes in this last case, had to recuse from the Supreme Court case because he was at the Tenth Circuit when the Murphy case was argued, so he can't decide it now as a Supreme Court justice. So we have eight justices that will decide the Murphy case. If it um, is a tie 4-4, four, four, that simply means the decision from the Tenth Circuit stands, which said that Creek Nation was a reservation. So we are, we are actively watching that. We're actively working on what our different response options are depending on the result of that case. But it is until we get the order from the court, we, we don't know what they say and we don't know how that changes or doesn't change things. Um, the Fleming case, that is the um, Cherokee citizen who applied to run for chief and was dis or, uh, found not eligible because of residency requirements. The original case was dismissed, but a second case was filed on the same day. Um, we had a telephone hearing last week on that, and the court denied the motion for temporary restraining order. Um, the court also expedited the briefing schedule, um, and all of the filings on that case were due yesterday. Um, part of the request for relief in that case was to um, delay the election until it was determined whether or not this uh, person could run. And I expect that the court may try to get some type of decision out today or tomorrow because the court is aware that the election is Saturday. So briefing is complete in that. And um, we did win on the TRO. The court denied the TRO. Um, and it is now a preliminary injunction is what they've asked for. And if, if we get anything on that today or tomorrow, I'll be sure and um, share it with counsel as soon as we do. And the final thing is um, I announced last time that we had a health general counsel position open. We also have a assistant attorney general one position open. So if anybody knows Cherokee attorneys looking for a job, send them our way. That's it. And I'll take questions if you have any. <coughs> counsel Quentin. I'm the hunting and fishing. You guys are in those discussions, like when you do the compacts and things, right, Attorney General? Yes. I had several. Uh, let me let me say yes with um, Sarah Hill, uh, Secretary of Natural Resources, has kind of led that since that position has been created. But we are involved in that. Okay. Well, so I might not can answer a question, but I'll try. So it'll be pretty easy. Um, a lot of the folks are talking about the bow hunting. And I wondered if that could get negotiate, negotiated in at some point. And, uh, you know, it was a uh, short enough Cherokee, you know, and it made sense, you know, that that could fit right into culture. Uh, you know, because they really took pride in the bow hunting history and, you know, 
I know what bow hunting is. I don't know enough about it to know. I don't, Do you have to have, I don't know if you have to have a separate license for that or if it's an se- extra fee, but I would, um, I'll, I'll be happy to pass that information yeah. along to Sarah, but <clears throat> and she probably knows about it, uh, okay. what the requirements are, but yeah, that would be, I mean, it's, it's all negotiable, right? When it comes up, it was automatically extended for a year um, and it will be next year, it will be up for renegotiation and it's, it's all negotiable, so. Um, and trapping, Jody, yeah. kind of like to do trapping. Well, I'm just going to add that I know one of the other tribes has negotiated and included all of the deer tags, trapping, and uh, pretty much everything across the board in in there. So, so that can I would bow maybe could be negotiated. President has so. said with another tribe, so I would hope that they pay that, more than us too. That's yeah, the <laughs> that may be part of the deal. They'll give us anything we want if we pay for it. The <laughs> issue is negotiating what we get for right. what what we we pay per citizen for license for that. So. Right. What I have. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Walker. Hey, Chrissy. Uh, first, what constitution are we operating on? I received a letter from the Bureau that says that we're under the 76th Constitution, but they're needing more information from the Cherokee Nation to get us up to date or up to speed in the Constitution under right now. Where, where are we in those steps? I disagree with them that we're under the 76th Constitution. We've had this conversation a lot. Um, First of all, I don't have a job if we're under the 76th Constitution because the AG's office was created under the 99. Um, We added additional tribal council districts under the 99 Constitution. So, but what 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 documents are they needing to? You're about approval, right? Approval from the from your bureau. So, they there are probably a couple of hundreds of pages of different letters that have been sent back and forth over the years about this issue. Some of them have been rescinded. A lot of them revolved around elections and the Freedman issue. Um, I, I believe what they're asking for are those, those letters. Um, and those were BIA letters, but they didn't all come from the same place. Some of them came from regional office. Some of them came from national office. Um, we're we are gathering information to get to them if if we're talking about the same, same thing letter, and not. and it's it's a lot of letters because you have one that refers to a letter that was sent <coughs> on this date and then you go back and find that letter and it was referred to a, it, it refers to a letter that was sent on another date so it's getting all of those and getting them in order and both on our side and their side they were sent by different people in charge at different times and different departments were responsible for keeping that so it's kind of just spread out and we we are actively working on that so there's there's lacking letters that is my understanding if if we're talking about the same issue that's my understanding okay and so once we submit those letters the bia will approve our constitution possibly there's still this you know that we removed from our constitution the provision that required approval so i don't know if we are asking them to approve the constitution as a whole or just just approve the removal of the provision that required approval it is it's a it's a it's a work in progress yeah the uh, uh the tribal trust mismanagement uh lawsuit that the Choctaws and Chickasaws went into. I, I heard a while back that we were going down those same, that, those, that same path. Uh, where are we at in that lawsuit? And we, um, I think Councilor Buzzard asked me about that last time. Um, what I would like to get, we have outside counsel on that. I mean, they update us, but we're not actively involved in counsel? it. Um, the, I can't think of the firm's name, Native Environmental Law Group. Tulsa um, what what I what I know is the we filed the suit the United States filed a motion to dismiss and that is pending so again we're waiting on a court decision um, so there hasn't been any there hasn't been any movement on that other than we're waiting on the court to rule on the United States motion to dismiss yeah, are we looking at the uh, how many acres of trust land are we are we looking at that that was mismanaged it's not it's not trust land it's trust assets trust assets how many acres it's not just it's not just land so the argument is and i think we talked about this a little bit last time choctaw is like 1.3 million and there's theirs is a little bit different so the reason we sued is because we said we didn't we have asked them for an accounting 
So these, these cases have happened all over the country with different tribes, and a lot of them have been settled. Mm -hmm. So the federal government has a legal duty to account for assets of tribes. And when tribes started following, filing these cases, they would say, we want an accounting. We're not asking for any money. We just want you to tell us how much of our assets you have taken in, have you invested them, have you spent them, if you sold off this land and got money, what did you do with that? And what happened in these cases is because the federal government was not good at keeping records when it came to tribes, they could not provide an accounting. And so the option was you can go back 100, 200, 250 years and try to formulate an accounting for all of these different transactions you had with the tribe because that's what the order would be from the court. You now have to do an accounting. In lieu of doing that, they then offered settlements to these tribes. So all of the tribes that have received settlements so far is because the federal government could not account for, and again, it wasn't just land. It was, it may have been that they sold land or that they had timber leases, and it, it's a lot of different things. And they, they couldn't account for that, so they would go back to the tribe and say, we can't do an accounting. It's going to take us this much time and energy and manpower. Therefore, we will offer you X amount of dollars to dismiss your suit and do away with all claims. And that was what the, the Chicks and the Chalks won. We've, we have filed a similar suit. The United States filed a motion to dismiss. So even if we win at this point, they don't owe us money, they owe us an accounting. And what I assume would happen is they would come to us just like they did all the other tribes and say, we can't do an accounting. Um, Cherokees are probably one of the most difficult to account for because we're the largest tribe and we had a lot of assets and we had a lot of treaties and we had a lot of promises. And if we won the case saying that they owed us an accounting, my guess is that there would be some type of monetary settlement negotiation at that point. But we filed the suit, they filed a motion to dismiss, and until the court rules on that, we're just kind of in limbo. What's the timeline you think on that? Again, I you know, don't know. Um, yep. We thought it would be by now. We are doing, the, the firm that we have um, representing us on outside counsel continues to do work on that because there's a lot of historical research on the assets that we had and the contracts and the treaties and what that stuff would be worth and what was paid and what wasn't paid and that involves like historians and, and folks like that to do actual <coughs> historical research and they continue to do that in anticipation of us of the case not being dismissed so there's ongoing behind the scenes work but there's no legal work going on on it right now uh, thank you thank you chair anybody else yes council buzz <clears throat> Chrissy, I just want to make you aware of some things that, that I'm going to be bringing forward in the health committee meeting. It's questioned and it's about the tornadoes and the storms we've had. Jay Clinic has a safer room, tornado safer room. And I asked probably two years ago about using it. And they said no. And that's the health department director at that time. But I want to bring it up again. The clinic has a safe, safer room. Head Start has a safer room. And uh, I guess we're not allowed to use it. But I, I have a different opinion of it and think that we should let citizens use those rooms. So I'm going to be bringing that forward. So I'm sure it'll come to, to the AG's office and things. So I just want to make you aware of it. And I, I don't, it's the first time I've heard about it, so I don't know what, why they said no, um, there may be some valid reasons. And I, and I should have pressed it further back, back when they said that. But, uh, but anyway, I'm going to be re-asking that question again because I've had several people call me about it. And, uh, and I just said, well. I definitely know. I mean, off the top of my head, for especially for Head Start, I can think of legitimate reasons that, you know, if you go out there to Head Start, the access to that facility is very controlled because you have a lot of children there and you don't want people being able, whether it's Head Start or CDC. So I... I would guess that it's kind of a policy that even in the case of an emergency, if we have a bunch of kids in a room, we can't just open up the doors and let anybody that wants to walk in because you could have sex offenders or you could have um, whatever. And my I think a lot of it depends on the circumstances yeah. and what time the tornado is coming to. And again, that's just off, right, if it's Sorry. at night and no kids are there, that's different. And anyway, that's just, just off the top of my head. And I, yeah, but, I just want to bring that to your attention because I'm sure that they're going to be asking for an opinion on the thing. Okay. But, uh, I just have a different uh, opinion about it so anyway just want to make you aware okay. thank you thanks sir anybody else Chrissy good report. thank you thank you Gwen Terrapin good afternoon hey Gwen we have sunshine outside 
Um, today we have a total of 28 requests. Nine of those are for you requests and we have five of those that are outstanding because they're brand new. We have 19 uh, GRA requests. All of those have been answered. Uh, the website's been updated and you'll be seeing some changes around July on the website and everything. Um, and everyone should have received a copy of it. Okay, any questions for Gwen? Not? Good report. Tax Commission? Sharon Swepson is very dependable. She's always here. <laughs> always has money to share. <laughs> Afternoon. Afternoon. I believe you have my report and I'll try to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions for our tax commission? Doing a good job, no questions. Thank you. Yeah, you got off pretty light today. <laughs> Gaming Commission, Jamie Humberg. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, just a couple of things I wanted to uh, add to the written report that's in your packets there. Uh, much like uh, what Shannon Buell was uh, describing a little bit earlier about the response to uh, the uh, flooding in Fort Gibson, I want to take uh, a moment to recognize the efforts of the staff of uh, the Gaming Commission that kind of helped uh, pull that operation together. We got notice about 6.30 or 7 o'clock on Tuesday night that the decision was going to be made to shut the facility down due to the rising waters. And my staff responded. We attended meetings with the operations and, uh, and others to figure out a plan for making that uh, closure happen. And as he said, this was, it was an amazing <coughs> piece of teamwork, uh, an effort that uh, we should all be proud of because uh, they were able to take that facility from closing at 10 o'clock, counting all the money, getting all the machines, everything prepped and everything out of there within about five hours. And it was an amazing, amazing effort on everybody's behalf. And uh, I think uh, you know, the long hours and the, uh, the willingness, the readiness of our people to step up and do what was needed without question was, is something to be admired. So, uh, but we were able to take all the games, all the sensitive equipment out of the facility. Uh, it has been transported and now located at the old Tahlequah Casino, kind of convenient so if there was ever a good time for something to happen now is that time uh, so the, the games and all the equipment remain under uh, surveillance cameras uh, the uh, funds from Tahlequah excuse me from Fort Gibson were transported to the Tahlequah casino and they are being maintained and operated and monitored there um, we did have a temporary closure of the South Coffeyville facility uh, that it closed at six o'clock on Monday evening it reopened last night at 6 o'clock. It wasn't due to any type of flooding uh, that affected the casino itself. It was more or less the, the local access roads <coughs> in and out of uh, South Coffeyville and Coffeyville, Kansas. There was a concern about the uh, river overrunning its banks and the levees getting into the water treatment plant, which would have contaminated potentially the uh, potable water available to the facility. So out of an abundance of caution, and I think it was a good move, the uh, Decision was made to close that facility at 6 o'clock on Monday. They reopened last night, just uh, 48 hours later. Uh, we were able to uh, assist in getting that facility open as well. Uh, so we have um, we've been maintaining close communications with uh, CNE at all levels of uh, emergency management, with uh, security, with um, uh, e-games management, everybody just to kind of keep everybody on the same page and, and ready for... Uh, the next step, which is to going to be to reopen uh, the Fort Gibson Casino. Unfortunately, at this time, I don't have a timeline of when that might happen. Uh, we are gathering more information as uh, the, the days and the minutes and hours go on. Uh, we do know that the Corps has cut back on the uh, output at Keystone uh, from 275 down to 245. They plan to reduce that again by Saturday to about 150, but it's still going to take time for those waters to recede. As the, everybody downstream, it's not going to be overnight that those waters are going to go away. So it's going to take some time. Then it will take time to assess what needs to be done in and around the uh, facilities. I know that they're going to have to inspect the, uh, the local roads before they allow them to reopen for traffic. So that, too, is going to add to any type of uh, uh, opening, uh, reopening project. But uh, it is something I think uh, we are all making uh, 
do with the best that we can. And, and uh, the people that are involved in this at every level along the way have shown a, a level of professionalism, dedication to their tribe that's, uh, that is it's, it's amazing. It's great to see. So with that, I'll take any questions. Jamie, how many employees did we have to uh, uh, just transfer out of that for Gibson? I believe, um, I believe all of the uh, individuals were either uh, told to report to work here at Tahlequah. No, nobody has necessarily been uh, permanently displaced or, or out of work. If they were not able to make uh, their trip here to Tahlequah, I believe the uh, alternative is to look at Katusa as the next place. If they just can't make it at all, I know that they have put, they being C&E have put measures in place to make sure that everybody still is getting paid okay. uh, during all this time. That's what I was wanting to Yes. Everybody's so, still being compensated. Yeah, so we, when we were talking about coordination of efforts, it's not just to get the, the machines and everything else out of there. It was everything, okay. including what was going to be done with the employees. So everybody has been taken care of. You know, your, your staff, the, the, you know, the quick response that, mm -hmm. that I heard about. I drove over there and talked to Mickey Spears, and he was still there and said he's going to be the last person to leave. But your staff and how quickly they responded and, come, and working with, with our emergency crew, I tell you what, people, they need, a, they need an applause because they really, they really, I mean, they, they you do. guys just really they do. took care of this. You yeah. kept our people safe and you salvaged the machine. Yeah, the uh, the amount of coordination. There was just so many. <laughs> there were so many uh, phone calls and conference calls going on that evening, uh, with between C and E and its uh, staff, between me and my staff, uh, collectively, and then face to face meetings to get that project kicked off. Uh, it is something that uh, you know people rallied, uh, and they they went above and beyond the call of duty. I think. Very good. Any questions for Jamie? Yeah, Councilor Buzzer. I, I guess I got a question about, did, did the water actually get into the casino floor at Fort Gibson? There has been some infiltration of the water. We just don't know to the extent just yet. I know that they, they do keep tabs on that. Uh, we had some that had entered the server room. Hopefully it's just uh, via the conduit from the uh, uh, surveillance lines coming out from the, the uh, light poles. There's cameras up on the light poles, so there's conduit that runs underneath and has been able to come in that way. Uh, as far as the rest of the floor, I think there is some water in there. To what extent, I don't know yet. I haven't had the question about it. I'm just curious about it. I see where c and &E and I'll, I'm sure Sean will make a report on, on the uh, intent to have gaming over in uh, Russellville, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. What extent do you have? Do you have anything? Are you involved with that at all at this point? No, not at all. That would be completely outside of our jurisdiction. So what happens if, would that be in your jurisdiction if, at all? If we do we ever put gaming in there? No, it will not. It would have no control of it? No. That would fall underneath uh, whatever regulatory framework the state of Arkansas has set up. Thank you, sir. Councilor Shembo. Councilman Buzzard asked the question I wanted. Oh, okay. Got the water in the building. So. Okay. Councilor Lay. And, and I was going to follow up. That's a good question. But there's a lot of cabling underneath that track, <coughs> false floor yeah. and connectors. And in my former life, I, not with that sophistication that they had, but cabling and connectors always, if they get wet, they're like throwing away and start over. What, what do you foresee on that? Uh, I, I'm kind of along the same line of thinking you are, I'm, I'm, but I'm kind of a prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Uh, but if water did get into there, we will have to evaluate the entire infrastructure because it's not only just the cabling for the, uh, the machines, whether it's a communications cable or electric cable, uh, but there's uh, air uh, conduit, air um, vents that are down there that will have to be inspected. So it's gonna be inspected from top to bottom, one way or another. Thank you. Anybody else? Report. Right. Thank you very Appreciate much. You. Yes, uh, human resources. Uh, Good afternoon. 
Um, I submitted a written report. I also included this um, month a couple of attachments <coughs> involving uh, background checks and motor vehicle policies that were discussed at last meeting. So went ahead and put them in for everybody. <coughs> Um, other than my report, does anyone have any questions or? Any questions for, yes, Council Taylor? Um, the, uh, hang on, total number of employees, 3734, does that include health care workers? All the, of them, the, it would not include um, Commission Corps or um, federal employees. It, it would be ours, and most of them on health care are our employees. Okay. And then my second question was um, the General Health Council position closed, I think, last week. When do you expect a panel to be sent on that, or um, any information you can give me about the timeline on it? We've got, we've got a panel. We've got a panel. We just haven't had time to schedule interviews. Okay. So, so a panel has been sent, yes. and interviews are forthcoming. Yeah. Okay. As soon as we can. Yeah. A little busy right now. Okay. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you. <laughs> Are you good? I am. Anybody else? Good course. Yes, Councilor Dobbins. What's this panel you're talking about? Uh, you want to go over what exactly a panel is? Oh, yes. Um, when we advertise and people apply for a job, we will, I have people assigned to each area or they have a few areas in there that they're responsible for, they will put together a list of everyone that applied that meets qualifications and also provide um, whether they're a tribal citizen, whether they're a veteran, whether they're the current employee, and they will just give a list of all of them qualify and will also um, <coughs> list other information too. And then the department reviews those. Um, decides if they want to interview everyone or if they want to go hey I want the top five to interview and that's the panel they look at and if they find someone in the first panel they make a selection and tell us who that is if not they'll say hey I I want to advertise again and we just start the process over again so, but your Janice's question I thought I heard health panel it was a um, health general counsel that's a position yes health general counsel which and um, presentation she got the okay, attorney okay that you're temporarily will work direct only with health okay. what elizabeth o'dell used to okay, do all right job. okay i heard health panel my ears perked up yeah and it actually was <laughs> had a panel been so the job was open people applied for it it closed um we actually it's going to run for a few more days because we ask for everybody so we get them all at once and in order to do that they have to open it up for a few more days but we've already gotten the people who had applied um, the first time so Thanks, Speaker. About good? Good report. All right. Thank you. Okay, old business, none pending. <coughs> New business. Discussion only. Uh, Councilor Critton, you want to take that? Yes, Speaker. And um, I was going to ask you now, when Mary and I talked about this, um, uh, I think the intent was to do more than, than uh, discuss. So, to get around that after discussion it's possible to amend the agenda if it passes the vote right if we want to do that all right this is a resolution authorizing a policy to make public all regularly kept job descriptions by the cherokee nation via the cherokee.org website to increase accessibility and reduce and delay costs to the cherokee nation and i guess we'll open up discussion on that. okay <clears throat> Anybody have any questions? Yes, Councillor Lay. Well, and I guess I'd just like to hear from Sean or whoever helped y'all work on this, and what what we're doing, what we're looking for. Now, now Mary brought this to me, and I thought it was uh, not too much of a head scratcher. Just all of the positions, you know, in Cherokee Nation. Uh, job descriptions. I think she'd run into some roadblocks trying to get a job description. We talked about FOIA and different things. Uh, just simply post the job descriptions. You know, if they're paid by Cherokee Nation, the Cherokee people's money, and a Cherokee citizen wants to 
find out just what that sucker's doing, what he's supposed to be doing, or she. Um, I think that's part of transparency. So, uh, I, unless it gets uh, more complicated than that, I can't see why anybody wouldn't want a, a job description put on put online unless there was they didn't have one or it was just a created job. Uh, I think this go flying colors. So. Big, I mean, Anybody else? I think it's what it is. Yes, Councilor Wong. Is this? Uh, I think this referring to the Secretary of State position. She's wanting a job description, which is an appointed position, and so it's not really a job description. So I think if we was going to do something, we'd have to uh, get, get the job description for appointed position as well as an employee that's accessible to the public as well as the, uh, this, this body. Okay. Is that, is that, as am I, is that right, Councilman? <coughs> right, just, uh, you know, I know we um, get lost in the definition of words and different meanings and mm -hmm. uh, I think it's simple as that. Uh, uh, I didn't write this, but just, if, you, if you're getting paid by the Cherokee people's money, Someone ought to be able to type up something that says, all right, here's what he's supposed to be doing, or she. Yep. And uh, that's, and I'm going to turn it over to anybody else have any. That's what I'll, you know. yes, Counselor. Yeah, I have a question that's about how exactly, Sean, would it reduce uh, delay and cost to Cherokee Nation just by posting job description? Well, well again, I didn't write this, but um, I could see you know, for your time, um, you know, that costs man hours. And, uh, you know, time for the people, I'm sure, if a constituent asked me, I had one asking about some old styrofoam. And uh, when somebody finally seen it, they kind of laughed because it sure enough looked like junk, but that was my constituents want for that day. So Mr. Enloe helped me out. We answered that constituent's question. Now, if a constituent wants to ask me, um, you know, what does old Brian do when he's sitting in that office? What's he supposed to be doing? You know, I'm not picking on Brian, but I'm taking time out of my day. The Cherokee people's uh, calling me to want something, and by golly, that's my job. So it could save their time if they're wanting to know, uh, save my time. and. It's tables time, and that, that's where I think, you know, I don't see a whole lot of reducing the cost, but maybe over time, uh, if a lot of people got curious at the same time, uh, Gwen might have other things to do than, than try to fool you what somebody's doing or supposed to be doing. That's, that's all I can see on the cost. Okay, counts are done. Sean, would it have... Would, would it have names associated with the no, job? No, just the job just description. The job description yeah. and what that job is supposed to be. Yeah, doing. it's not. They're not even going into salaries or anything. It's just okay. The job description. Good. Yeah, Councillor Austin. Uh, Councillor Walkstick referred to the uh, appointed positions. Uh, I don't like the Secretary of State's is is in the Constitution. Uh, it basically says that the uh, it's at the will of the chief. Basically, I forget how the exact wording is, but that's there's really not a job description for that. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that would be kind of a hard one to put down there. That wouldn't be a regularly kept one, I wouldn't think. Most cabinet level, it's at the discretion of the of the leader. Right. But there's got to be some narrative, but not very clear. I, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I mean it would be real vague anyway. Yeah. Just if I can. Um, let me let me get one more out here, Councillor Dobbins. No, I guess Sean, this is a a policy to make public job description, basically. Yeah. So that's contrary to our policy now in HR. Well, or, when they were trying to get a job description, we had a big 
So and then here, about what would be the argument to keep things as is instead of incorporating this? I, I agree. This seems to be a, a, not a head scratcher. Yeah. But what's the argument in terms of just keeping it the way that it is? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Christy, do we need to amend our FOIA? So that was going to be my. So I, I think that the amount of work to put all of the job descriptions online is a lot, and they get changed a lot. Um, so to have to store all those because some of them are five, six, seven, eight pages because they list all the duties, all the qualifications, all the educational requirements, all the physical or that you can lift 20 pounds and all that. So they're, they're lengthy documents. So to keep all those and then every time one is changed to go back and put it up, I think the easier way to do this, I don't, I don't know why um, they, they can't be made public, but I think this group has to do that. So I think the easy way to do it, and, and I, I just asked how many requests we've ever gotten other than someone applying for a job, and they said just a handful. So this is not something that people are routinely asking for, but I think the easiest way to do it would be under FOIA to, to specifically say job descriptions of Cherokee employees are public records. And then if someone wants one, they do a FOIA request and they get the, the issue that we've had right now is whether or not they're, that they can be exempt under FOIA. And that I think the easiest way would be to change FOIA and say job description, because there are certain things in there that are automatically public record, the way the law is written now, and just add this to that group that they are a public record and the way you would still have to fill out the form, but then it would be when someone wants one, you have two people, you know, the FOIA officer and the department getting the job description versus the work on the back end, I think, of keeping all of these. And no. I, I don't know why one person wanted a couple of these, but it, this is, I understand someone wanting it and being able to get it and the law being changed, but I think, um, the idea that people are just going to peruse the Cherokee Nation website and look at the hundreds of job descriptions we have when you see what's in them and what they're boring they're not it doesn't tell you how much someone makes it 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 does tell you whether or not they're a supervisor but it doesn't it, it literally talks about kind of the day-to-day -day tasks and when you open a job much of that information is in the posting anyway, the qualifications and everything else. So well, I, I'm, I'm not opposed to right. them being made public. No, I, I just, just don't I know see, if this is the best I way to do it. I see your point and I see what you're saying, but, you know, putting them in a computer, uh, you know, surely there's somebody, or we're always talking about job creation. And, you know, boring to one, maybe not be boring to the other. I mean, people dig stuff up all the time stacks of stuff so um, to say that you know it's not worth the time you know that's that's that person's pile of styrofoam i'm not saying it's not worth it but if we only have two people out there wanting to look at all the job descriptions well, I'm not saying there's two but it, the one that wanted it got hammered and couldn't right. get it it's a lot faster for that person Something, something needs to be changed the way we do it. But in the long range, one person being able to say, I want all of these job descriptions versus all the work of getting them up there, keeping them up there, keeping them updated. Because they change, even in our department, we're pretty small and we, we change them fairly often because someone gets a new duty or a new task that they're going to do. So their job description has to be amended because you can't make employees do things that aren't in their job descriptions. Um, so this is a, it's kind of a fluid thing. But what's this? What's the solution here? You have a recommendation? Pass this dude. Well, and I don't know that this does anything. This well, is a I, resolution. I wanted to make sure that we, right? you know, this this would solve it. I'm not for sure it does, but uh, uh, this is the will of council. So this sure. is a request by council to put them all on the Cherokee Nation website. Um, that involves a lot of departments. It involves HR. It, devol it involves IT. Um, you know, I know that we are working on updates mm -hmm. to websites, so there's stuff going on. Personally, I think the easier way to do it is to amend, amend FOIA and say job descriptions are public records. And then if anyone wants one, they request it. It doesn't get them publicly posted, but... Um, How lengthy is that, is that uh, form of the, a request the FOIA? FOIA form? How, How lengthy one is page. that? And I, Nason probably has more information on how many of these there are and how often they're updated i don't i don't have that information i, think, I just know kind of the, the process of it okay i just i think you know the intent you know I'm, i get told all the time you're a legislator and appropriator and how i would love to just be that 
But, you know, I'm also, I'm also not a, can't do that, Sean, walk away. So how I, I would love to be a legislator and appropriator only. But now Mary is trying to do some legislation here, a resolution here. And, you know, the, what somebody thinks with all due respect is boring and easier. A legislator got with me and I said, it's hey, heck of a deal. So I think what I'm going to try to do. But this isn't legislation. Resolution. resolution. That's what I said after I said legislation. So what I'm going to try to do here is amend the agenda so that we can vote on this put all of these job descriptions. There's a lot of people running around up here. I've been up here four years in the thick of things. I have no idea what some of these people are doing. When they're in Tahlequah, uh, so I'm gonna make a motion to amend the agenda, to post this, put out any question of what somebody's supposed to be doing, and to, to get to where we can vote on this thing. So I'm going to make a motion to amend the agenda. Councilor Cretton, can I for one second? Uh, that's what, just my what motion. Did, what did you say? I just think if, if the legislative body is ordering the executive body to post something on a website, because if you look at other places in our law, there are things that have to be posted online. Um, I, I don't think that's a resolution. I think it's legislation. I'm not saying you can't do it. I just don't think this gets it done. Because we have things like public meeting notices and other things that our law require to be online, and those are all done through legislative acts, not through resolutions. I'm Councilor Um Maybe it would be prudent to look at this a little bit. Um, is that, I mean, if we're looking to do what's Maybe best, or, or maybe if we, we we can even do it that way. Um, how many did you say there was only a handful? How many? And I agree uh, with what you're saying, absolutely, 100%. Um, but how many requests are made? You know, said there's a handful. What is a handful of requests made for, for this? A, uh, for you for um, a job description. Job descriptions, yes. Since I have been there, I don't think I've had a for you for a job description. Over, if you don't mind. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, since I've been doing this since 2012, we've only had maybe five. I mean, I could go back and check my records, but for election, we've only had maybe five that people have actually asked for job descriptions. So if, he, if we're just asking for a resolution, and that's all the council member is asking for then that's not going to hurt what you're doing already, is it? The, I agree with Chrissy's point, and I would have the FOIA thing saying that these are the items. It would be much easier to avoid two con potentially contradictory laws to stick the same information in the FOIA and say, because now there are certain items that are, when you walk in, you get it immediately. There's other items that say, hey, um, this is definitely a FOIA in the statute. Others say there's definitely not a FOIA, and then you have a whole list of discretionary items. I believe this would be better if we put it in one of them that says you must release this. Are we talking about just the government side or are we talking about Cherokee Nation, CNBC, any employee? Are we talking about our 11,000 employees or are we just talking about the government side? There, CNB is subject to FOIA as well. Um, I do think kind of a, an offline question here. Um, I think you run into different issues when knowing the job duties and qualifications of a government employee, a, a true Cherokee Nation, I know Councilor Lay says we're all the same, but we don't have the types of, my guess is that CMB is going to say, we have certain positions that we don't want the whole world to know everything they do because they're competitive, right? We, we fight with other casinos to get these people to come work for us. And um, it, this is just you know shooting from the hip, but I think CMB would say that there are competitive reasons that some of their job descriptions sh should not be public. I don't know that, you know, although we compete with people for jobs on the government side too, I, I don't know that that argument is as strong here. But 
if the if the FOIA is changed that says job description of employees are public, that would all that would apply to CMB as well. Okay. And I think I don't I can't remember how this one's written. I don't know if that would include Councilor Lay, you have a question. Oh yeah. So Miss Mr. Enlow just said another another area where we know that we're extremely competitive right now are um, physicians, providers, those types of things. And, you know, a lot of, we know a lot of what they do, but there are certain things in there like extra duties they may have or how many people they supervise and those types of things that, that can be important when it comes to competition over someone. And if someone who's trying to hire our doctors away gets our entire job description and says, well, at Cherokee Nation, they have to do these five things. We'll tell them if they come work for us, they only have to do three of these things. Um, so, so you think that how it is now is preventing us from getting those doctors? Uh, not you all, not, not council. How, how it is now? Not council. You all can get them under GRA, I think, without a question. Um, depending on what the, what the position is, I think maybe it affects whether or not they're available under FOIA. I think we're and just, just competitive to be clear, all over because we just lost our executive director of health, so we must be competitive in almost every field. An employee can always get their own as well. As an employee, I can call HR and say, well, you have to sign it when you go to work there, so you've seen it, but I can call HR and say I need my job description. So individual employees can get their own. Supervisors obviously have access to all of theirs. Council would have access to any of them under GRA. It's just right now we don't give individual job descriptions to members of the public is my understanding of this. Okay. Yes, Councilor uh, Islay was for you. Uh, and Chrissy, I'm still formulating here. So you're saying that it, it would have to be an act, not a resolution, I think is what you're... So... You didn't say that, but I yes, think that's what you're going to do. Yeah. It's, this says the, the nation wishes to make public all regularly kept job descriptions via the Cher Cherokee.org website. And I'm not saying anyone would do this, but what if IT's like, we just don't have the time hold or hold space. On, hold on. Oh. I, I get lawyer and everything, so. <laughs> just, and, and just to help me make my decision. So you think it needs to be an act if we, if we did this? Whatever it is, I think it needs to be an okay. act. And so what, and I missed out on the argument, I guess, to start with. What job was not, was somebody denied a uh, an access to a job description or what? Mary. And Mary what, what job was it? I think she was asking Mason for her Secretary of State. Is that one you told her it's none of her business? I don't. I don't. I understand now why she's putting this on there. If that's if that's the thing that I recall, Mason. I did say no. I'm not releasing it. Yeah. Because on that one, I believe it was a constituent wanted it. She's like, I'm getting it for a constituent. It's like, okay. and it's kind of this well, discussion. And, and here's something that maybe you and she could have gone to the back of the room and discussed it without some of these smart comments that I heard that day. Yes. And thank you. Okay. Councilor Duff. Yeah, I just, I don't think it's a problem to do this. I, I would be. I don't think it's something that I'd be happy to look at. I just don't think that this resolution is going to do that. I, I think Chrissy's right. I think it needs to be a legislative act, and if we pass this resolution, it's not going to really change change anything. Would you prefer we put it in a legislative form and bring this back? Why don't we, why don't we uh, table this till next month? Mm -hmm. Okay. And get with Mary. Get, sure. You know, like I said, I didn't write this. I wholeheartedly agree. You know, and it makes me. I think on the surface you know, we all agree. Why? We, we just want to make sure we accomplish you what you guys are requesting here. You bet. So let's take a let's take a look at it. Make a motion to table it till next month. Appreciate it. Motion to table. Second. 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 All in favor, signify by saying aye. Thank you, Thank Council. You. All right. Yeah, the, the, Got a lot was, done here today. Right. Now I need a Carry motion to uh, <coughs> adjourn. Yes, yeah, so Councilor Buzzer, before we adjourn. I, uh, last month we had talked about some of the tarot issues, and I'd like to put on the agenda for the next uh, Rules Committee meeting to discuss tarot law. Okay. And, and I don't think there's a whole lot of discussion needs to be done about it. I think what I would like to see done is something about contractors, 
that go back and go back under the table and, and set up business again. In a different the capacity, different name? Yes. Yeah, yes. I think the we same, talked about same that. People on there, but they yes. went back and did it on the different names. And if we get our attorney to write those languages up for us for next meeting, it may be settled because that's the issue I have with it. Okay. I agree. You get that, Shelly? Okay. Yes, Councillor. Real quick, Speaker, we talked earlier. Um, I would like quarterly <coughs> for uh, registration to, to present to us. There's lots of questions. And, you know, I told you about the incident that I wasn't clear, clear on. Once they explained it, I kind of understood it. And, you know, there's a lot of photo ID events going to be here and there. And different. I think there's enough uh, questions out there that quarterly we might be able to get some information. Is this kind of the place to we figure out if we want to do that? Uh, ask our uh, registration director to give a report maybe next month. Okay. All right. Anybody else? <coughs> Good meeting. So we need a motion to adjourn. So move. Got a motion and a second. Aye. Aye.